So, parts four, five, and six, five, six, and seven to the end. Um, <clears throat> part six, I'm sorry, or five, we get uh, a flashback in the form of the journal entry that had been destroyed. Um, Piranesi finally gets the pieces that were in the seagull nests and assembles it. And we find the events of, what was it, November something, 2018, uh, or sorry, 2008, I think. Let me just check, because I think the date actually is kind of, uh, if not important, then interesting. Um, November 15th, 2002, 2012. Okay, so, so that tells me that he's been, he lives in the house for six years. Um, so in 2012, he goes to visit Dr. Val uh, sorry, Matthew, uh, a certain Matthew Rose Sorensen goes to visit Dr. Uh, Ketterly, Valentine Ketterly, and ask about the other world and, and iron sales and whatnot. Um, and Ketterly specifically asks him, have you told anyone that you were coming here? Which, that should have set off alarm bells. And he's like, no, I told no one. No one knows that I'm here. If, if you're investigating a cult that has... Uh, sort of a history with kidnapping and disappearances and, and one of the members tells you does anyone know you're here don't tell them yes or don't tell them no so <clears throat> Ketterly says oh great I can use you let me just uh, we'll perform the ritual together and Rose Sorensen's thinking it's a joke whatever sure we'll do this ritual so they do the ritual, and this takes uh, Matthew Rose Sorensen into the house where Ketterly leaves him. Um, and from that point until where this book starts, he loses memory and sense of identity to the point where he becomes Piranesi. Um, so that's sort of the backstory that uh, explains everything up to that point. Um, and then part six is... Uh, about the wave, so there might have been mentioned earlier, but Piranesi, because he knows so much about the house and the tides, he determines that there's going to be a, a great flood, a great wave, at a certain date. Um, and he sort of warns Ketterly, like, don't be at this location at that time because of this flood. But Ketterly sees it as an opportunity to get rid of 16 who's, um, we still don't really know much about at this point, um, except they're sort of an antagonistic figure. Um, so he gets a kayak and a gun and plans to somehow do away with 16 in the house during this flood. But um, that goes wrong. Piranesi meets 16 and Ketterly, they all sort of meet while the flood is starting. Um, Piranesi intervenes and stops Ketterly from killing 16, who turns out to be Raphael, um, uh, uh, this woman who's a police officer. Uh, and sh we find out that she has been investigating um, the disappearance of Matthew Rose Sorensen for six years, apparently. Um, and there, she determined a link between him, his disappearance, and Ketterly, and... Um, she, I don't remember how she learned of the ritual to get to the house. It might, it might have been Aaron Sales. It might have been Ketterly himself that told her. Um, nevertheless, she's there. This wave happens. Ketterly's trying to shoot them. Piranesi tries to warn him that the wave's coming, but the wave's coming and knocks him out of the boat and um, kills Ketterly. And this is sort of the the big climax of the, of the book, I guess, where the the antagonist Ketterly is killed. Um, Matthew Rose Sorensen escapes to safety on the shoulders of one of the statues. Um, Raphael, he also helps Raphael in getting to safety. He calls out to Ketterly to to come to safety as well, but Ketterly doesn't intent on trying to shoot them, and and dies. Um, and uh, one more note on sort of the nature of this world. Ketterly, or no, I think Raphael, he, when she's later trying uh, talking with 
um, Piranesi, trying to get him to come back to the real world, our world, explaining to him that he has family who's sort of been looking for him for this whole time. Um, and he says, you know, no, I'm this, the house is my world. This is the world now. Like, I don't, why would I want to leave it? Um, and Raphael says something to the effect of, you know, I feel bad for you. You, all you have is these, these pale imitations of, of, of life and, and stuff in form, in the form of these statues. And that sort of offends Matthew or, uh, Piranesi saying, no, these, these statues are in fact the true ideal forms and in your world in Raphael's world the real world um, you only have pale imitations that that can never match up to the true ideal forms um, in in this house which is very much Plato's world of, of, of forms sort of the that platonic theory the the world of world of um, forms ideals ideal forms whatever that's what the house is um, um, supposed to be that's one of the aspects of the house is it has that platonic aspect to it anyways um, so Piranesi he goes and finds the body of Ketterly and he puts it in a place where the fish and the birds will eat it until the bones just remain and then he'll place the bones with the bones of the others the other 14 and um, sort of give it the due respect that he does to the others um, the others who are sort of uh, or were Ketterly's colleagues um, from from our understandings is people that Iron Sales had sent there and had died there so it's kind of fitting that that Ketterly also um, ends up there dead I guess um, but after that uh, Piranesi agrees to 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 leave the house and come back to the real world, and that ends the the part six. Um, part seven is very short, and it's almost like an epilogue. We have this new person who starts dating uh, their journal entries, um, November twenty twenty sixth of November twenty eighteen. So we're, we're back to sort of the real world dating system. Um, he. Is no longer Piranesi, but he's still not Matthew Rose Sorensen. He's sort of in a third iteration, a uh, third life, um, to which he does not give himself a name. But he responds to Matthew Rose Sorensen because the people of the world, of that world, expect him to respond in that way and see him as Matthew Rose Sorensen, including his family. So he sort of talks to the police officers. He tells them, like, I was in a house of many rooms and tells his family that and they assume that he suffered a mental breakdown um, some people are drawing a connection between the fact of his reappearance at the same time as Ketterly's disappearance uh, and they think that Ketterly killed himself and let Matthew Rose Sorensen go and that um, Ketterly had held him hostage much like Iron Sales had held uh, James Ritter hostage um, speaking of which um, this new person Piranesi 2.0, 3.0, uh, he goes to visit James Ritter, um, who had been trapped in the house, much like um, Piranesi had been. However, Piranesi, James Ritter um, lived in the house, but was not sort of a child of the house. He wasn't, he didn't know how to live in the house. He didn't know how, to, how the house could provide for him like Piranesi did. Um, but Piranesi um, still has access to the house. Raphael told him the sort of rituals and procedures of how to get there so he can come and go as he pleases. So when he goes to see John Ritter, he says, or James Ritter, he says, I've come to take you back. So um, he takes uh, Ritter back and he's like overwhelmed with joy and wants to stay there. But uh, Piranesi or whoever this person is says, no, I can't leave you here. We have to go back. So he takes him back to the real world, but he says, whenever you want to go, we can go. And if I ever decide that I'm going to permanently return, then I'll take you with me and we can both live there. And that sort of wraps it up. So very interesting. Um, I think I say that every time. Very interesting book. But uh, I thought the ending was, was interesting because sort of the climax happened. And then I took a break 
like I didn't re I didn't finish the book. I thought, oh, there's still a good chunk of the book left, but there's really just sort of an epilogue left. Um, because I don't I haven't read a, a a short book like this in a while, but it was it was really neat. Uh, sort of not kind of magical realism that there's magic in our world, but it's only accessible through another world. But the whole book is from the perspective of that world, where our world is the other. Um, yeah, I, 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 I really like the perspective of, of Piranesi and, and how there's, you could have told the story from, from a Ketterly perspective where he's sort of the student of Iron Sails, this sort of crazy transgressive thinker, this occultist who discovers access to sort of another world and they explore that world and, and, uh, and sort of the complicated relationships with the other, uh, his colleagues and the drama and people getting trapped there and held against their will and but instead we have from the perspective of someone who is in the house and of the house and and fully a child of the house um, so we see the world through their eyes and um, we sort of can piece together this the story the backstory the the narrative that led to this point through that that individual um, I thought it was a, a really neat really neat way of, uh, of writing. So yeah, another book I enjoyed reading. That's it.